Right, comparing uh, graphs of original functions and derivatives is a it's a pretty difficult concept, um, and it just takes more repetition to hopefully sink in. So I'm going to give you a few more examples of um, finding the graph of a derivative from the original, and I'll also give you at least a couple examples of finding the original from the derivative. But let's start one way. So let's say I have a graph of f of x and it will just be like this. So that is f of x. So if I wanted to find the derivative of that, we find Oh, I actually centered it on the y-axis, so that might be misleading. So um, right here at 0 is where f of x has a slope of 0. So if I was going to graph f prime, I would start by making the derivative 0 at 0. Okay, That point is on the derivative graph, f prime of x. Okay, to the right of it, if I were to pick that point right there, looks like the slope is about 1. So in the lines, it's about 1. Right here, it might be 2, 3, 4, and it's going to keep on going up to the right. To the left, it's about negative 1 right there, negative 2 right there, and so on. And you can see that the graph of f prime of x is a line which it should be because a derivative of a quadratic is always going to be a linear function. The degree goes down 1. Now what if I asked you to find the graph of the derivative of this function? I'll call it g of x. Okay, well, find where its derivative is 0 right there. So if I was going to graph the derivative of this, I'd start by at 0, the derivative is 0. Right here it's about 1, here it's about 2, right here it's negative 1, here it's negative 2, and so on. So this f prime of x is also g prime of x. This function is, represents the derivative of both this and this. Now, what does that mean? That this function f and this function g have the same slope anywhere val any value x. It has the same slope. So what do we call two functions that never intersect and have the same slope? So f of x is actually parallel to g of x. Two parabolas are parallel because they have the same slope and never intersect. Um, another example, let's see. So I'll do one more where we have a derivative, or find the derivative graph. Let's see. Um, Okay, so it's not clear. I should have uh, made my axes a little better first. All right, so if I was going to, if this was y, and I looked for y prime, we're looking for the slope or the derivative. And the slope here looks like it goes up 2 over 2, so the slope here is 1. So that means the derivative up until it gets to negative 1 here is 1. Okay, the derivative is 1. Afterwards, then it has a negative slope. So down 2 over 1, 2, 3, 4. So it looks like that one has a slope of negative 1 half. 
negative 2 over 4. So if I was going to graph the derivative, what is the slope here? It's negative 1 half the whole way across, if that was negative 1 half. Negative 1. Okay, so that's the graph of the derivative, and that would be y prime. Um, 3.2 talks about differentiability, um, where derivatives exist, and they cannot exist if it's not smooth. Uh, so this is not smooth, it's called a corner. So the derivative at negative, call this negative 1, doesn't exist, and that's why those two uh, have open circles because the derivative doesn't exist there. Okay, so now um, we're going to go backwards and let's say I have um, the graph of the derivative, so y prime, and what is the original going to look like? Well, let's say I have, I'll just do this. So that is my y prime. Now I cannot find the original just given the y prime because if you look up here, if we know that this is the derivative, we have infinitely many originals that are the same shape. So you need to know where the original had, it, we need to know one of its points for sure in order to align with the original. So we'll say y of 0 equals 2. Okay, so now I can find the original given its derivative in one point. It's called an initial value. Okay, so now we're going to graph the original. If we look at the derivative here, the most important point is right there. Okay, what happens there? The derivative is zero. If the derivative is zero, that means we have a horizontal tangent. It's either a max or a min, probably. But for sure we have a horizontal tangent. Okay, so we'll either have, well, let's see what's to the left of it and the right of it. So. I'm going to start, well let's see, this derivative is positive here because it's above the x-axis. y prime is above the x-axis. So if it's a positive derivative, that means the original function is increasing at that point. It's increasing just a little bit, it's increasing more and more, it's really pretty steep right here. So it's steep, steep, not as steep, not as steep, now it's zero. And now it's decreasing just a little bit, decreasing more and more and more, and now it's going pretty steep in the negative direction. So you can maybe see that what we have is a parabola that's opening down here that aligns with this point right here at the peak. I'm increasing a lot, increasing less and less, and it's zero. I'm increasing a lot, less and less, and now it's zero. Now I'm decreasing just a little and then I'm decreasing more. Decreasing more, more, and more. Okay, so we have a parabola that looks like this, but it might look like this, or it might be up here. So what we need to do now is plot the point 0, comma, 2. So let's just say that's 1, that's 2, and there's the point 0, 2. So now we have to slide our parabola up. Oh, I actually drew that one through there. So this parabola right there satisfies the ordered pair 0 comma 2 and it satisfies the derivative being y prime looking like that. Okay, notice if we go backwards for derivatives if we go backwards we're going from a linear to a quadratic. So if I found the derivative of the red one you should get a line. If you take a derivative of a linear you should get a horizontal. So if I was going to find the derivative of this y prime, it would be, looks like it's like negative 1. So this right here would be y double prime. The derivative of this one right here. 
All right. Maybe that's enough. We'll do more of these in class. I'm, I'm sure of that.